and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we would look at capital gains and capital losses for corporation. This topic is covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. And specifically on the CPA exam, it is covered substantially. And the reason is this. They will try to ask you questions about the capital gains when it comes to individual as, a, as well as corporation. They will try to simply confuse you because it's an area that you can be easily confused about because you they could be asking you about corporation or they could be asking you about how an individual taxpayer treats capital gains and capital losses that's why the topic is important as always i would like to, to remind you my viewers to connect with me on linkedin if you have a linkedin account please connect with me on a professional level if you don't have a linkedin account i strongly suggest you you uh, you get one if you're if you if you're a Facebook user you could like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level if you choose to you want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube this is where I house all my lectures if you like my YouTube lectures please like them share them put them in playlists let the world know about them this is my Twitter account and I do have a website on my website you could always found um, CPA offers and for now I'm running a special from Becker CPA review you could either buy the all four parts at $24.93 or the Becker, Becker bundle for $29.87 which include digital flashcards as well as a final review you can go to my website for hatlectures.com to check out those offers again this offer will end at a certain time I will have other offers for you most probably you are either a CPA student or and accounting students if you are viewing this lecture whether you're a cpa candidate or an accounting student signing up for a cpa course will help you substantially for both reasons so let's go ahead and keep working with the key differences in computing the income taxation for individual and the corporation and here here is a list of the differences and we already covered accounting period and accounting method in the other section in the other session in the prior session in this session i will work on capital gains and capital losses and recapture of depreciation this is already done you can find it in the playlist but today we're going to be focusing on capital gains and capital losses so it's very important to re to remind you how do individuals treat capital gain capital gains and capital losses and how do corporation which is the topic of this session treats capital gains and capital losses individuals hopefully you remember this net capital gain subject to the following preferential treatment remember if you have net capital gain okay what you can do if you if it's a short term remember when you have a capital we have short term capital gain and we have long term capital gain the short term capital gain basically you will tax it as ordinary income so it's based on your regular tax rate whatever your tax rate is that that's gonna that's gonna be subject to that and that could go from 10 up to 37 depending which tax bracket you are in that's that's for the short term for the long-term capital gain for the long-term capital gain remember they can be taxed at nothing they could be zero percent 15 or 20 depending on your tax bracket now I'm not gonna go over the tax bracket here because I did go over those tax bracket way way in way much in detail in prior chapter so make sure you know when do you tax at when you're not taxed 15 or or 20 now if you have a net capital loss simply put you have a loss overall what can you do well you can deduct up to three thousand of the losses against ordinary income so you can deduct up to three thousand of your capital losses if you have more than three thousand you can carry those to future years and those carry over do not lose their identity but remain either a long term or short term whatever that whatever their whatever their character is whatever their short term or long term so notice here to to, to wrap it up if you want to think about it when we have capital gains and capital losses we could have short term capital gain we could have long term capital gain short term capital loss and long term capital loss and the way the gains are treated are different whether it's short term or long term and however the losses you know you can deduct up to 3000 and the remainder is carried indefinitely that's the individual and hopefully this is a review quick review for you now we need to talk about the corporation so how does the corporation treat capital gains and capital losses well first thing there is no special tax rate applied to capital gains so if you have a capital gain 
guess what? They don't look at it any differently. They don't look at it any differently. Any differently than what? Any differently than any other source of income. So it's basically, it's taxable at your regular rate. So they don't, they don't treat it any differently. So the entire gain is included in the income subject to the normal corporate tax rate. So it's, you know, you have a capital gain. It's not any special, it doesn't get any special treatment. Now, corporation cannot take a deduction for a net capital loss. What happened if you have an overall capital loss? Well, individual, you can take the, you can deduct 3,000. Well, for corporation, the only thing you can do with capital losses is offset capital gains. So if you have capital losses, good. The only thing you can do is use it against capital gain. Use it against capital gain. That's the only thing you can do with capital losses, okay? What happens if you have too much capital losses? So in other words, let's assume you have 3,000 in, let's, let's use something other than 3,000. Let's assume you have 5,000 in capital gain and 20,000 in capital loss. Well, overall, overall, you have a loss of 15,000. What can you do with that loss? Well, you could unused capital loss are carried back three years and carried forward five years. So what you can do, you can go back three years or you can go forward with them five years, carry them for five years. All carried over losses are treated as short term. So it's just basically, it doesn't make a difference whether you call it short term or long term, it doesn't make a difference, okay? Um, why? Because it, it, it doesn't it doesn't have any special, any special treatment, okay? And the best way to illustrate this is to just take a look at two examples. Robin, an individual, incur a net long-term capital loss of 7500 for year 2018. Assuming adequate taxable income, Robin may deduct 3000 of his loss on the 2018 return, and the remainder, which is 4500 of the loss, is carried forward to 2019 indefinitely until they use them up. Okay, And they are carried as long-term because they retain their character as long-term. Now, assume that Robin is a corporation. Well, none of the losses of the 7,500 losses incurred in 2018 can be deducted in that year. Why? Because they don't have a capital gain. However, what can they do? They can carry back the loss to 2015, 16, 17, in that order. You go to the latest, then 16, then to the most recent. And offset it against any capital recognized in those here, any capital gain. What happens if you don't exhaust those 7,500. If the carry back does not exhaust, then you carry them to 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, the next five years in this order. And the long-term capital loss is treated as short-term in any carry over. Just there is no special treatment. Okay. And the best way to put all of this together is to work an example just to kind of show you how this all fits together. Okay. During 2018, Gorilla a corporation, a calendar year, C, cal, calendar year C corporation has net short-term capital gain of 1500. So net short-term capital gain uh, of 15,000. Net long-term capital loss of 105. Net long-term capital loss of 105. Wow, that's a lot, okay? And taxable income from other sources, 460. That's taxable income from the business. Okay. Um, and here are, we have data from prior year, 2014. They have net long-term capital gain, 2015 net, net long-term capital gain, 2016 net long-term capital gain, 2017 net long-term capital gain. How are the capital gain and capital losses treated on Gorilla's 2018 tax return? So simply put, um, how are they treated? Okay. Well, simply put, if we have a gain and a loss, we net them out. Overall, we have a loss of 90,000. And what can we do with that loss for 2018? For 2018, nada, nothing. Remember, losses, we cannot do anything with losses for 2018 because that's the question, that's how, what the question is asking. Okay, that's why. Now, determine the amount of cap of the 2018 capital loss that's carried back to each of the previous years. So remember, we cannot use it now, but we can use it to offset, either go back three or go and go forward with it five. Let's go back three with it. So if we have $90,000 in losses, what can we do? Well, go, going back three years, that's one, two, three. So we're going to start with 
Those are the years that we can offset. And we'll start with the latest. We start with 2015. So what we do for 2015, we're going to file a tax return, a meta tax return, and cancel our gain, 18,000. That's done. For 2016, we're going to also file a return and cancel our gain. Oops. For 20, so this is 2015, this is 2016, and for 2017, we're going to file an amended return and cancel our losses. Overall, total carry back is 63,000. So guess what? Of the 90,000, of the 90,000 losses, we used up 63,000. We still have losses of 27,000. What are we going to do with this $27,000 losses? This is going to be carried forward to 2019 in case we have any gain. 2020, 2021, 2022, till 2023, up till 2023. Get carried forward five years. <clears throat> Compute the amount of capital loss carried forward. I already did this 27,000. And indicate the years to which the loss can be carried. Again, we already talked about this. Okay. Now, if Gorilla is a sole proprietorship rather than a corporation, how would the owner report these transactions? What we're saying is Gorilla is not a corporation. Gorilla is a sole proprietary. So what can they do? Well, remember, they computed their net, and their net was 90,000. What can we do with this 90,000? Well, with this 90,000, we can deduct 3,000 for year 2018 because you are allowed you are allowed to deduct 3,000 against even ordinary income. So you are allowed to do so. Well, if you deduct if you deduct 3,000, if you deduct let me go back there. If you deduct 3,000 What's left is 87,000. So if you do like three, you still have 87,000. Now, what can you do with this <coughs> 87,000? This 87 will be carried forward indefinitely, and it's going to be long-term capital loss, long-term capital loss, long-term capital loss, because it retain, it, re it retain its character for the individual. Now again, as I said, this topic is is, is important. It's uh, for on the income tax, so um, on the CPA exam. So make sure you do understand the difference between individual, how an individual, and how a corporation treat capital gains and capital losses. If you need additional lectures, please visit my website. If you happen to do so, please consider donating. And if you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.